Okay, so welcome to Bringing Stats Alive. Um, Sonia, can you uh, take us through the paper that you recently published in the Journal of Communication um, and talk, talk first about the research goals, what are you trying to find out? Right, um, so the research I do is on how parents um, manage their children's internet use in the digital age and what we have is an enormous literature on how parents manage their uh, children's television use and the predominant emphasis is about avoiding harm, trying to limit uh, children's television use and we weren't sure how relevant that literature was going to be in the digital age so we did a survey of European parents and we wanted to try to understand how they could think about the managing the benefits of their children's internet use as well as trying to uh, reduce the risk of harm. So it was a question about how parents set the balance and what kinds of activities they engage in. Um, and we also wanted to recognise that parents are not, as was said perhaps 10 years ago, uh, the digital immigrants who know nothing. They too have skills, they too understand the digital environment. And we wanted to see what difference their level of skills makes to the kind of, uh, about the internet, to their um, engagement with their children and their children's internet use. So we had um, a number of research questions. Um, we first of all needed to find out what the activities were that parents um, undertook, which we did through a, a survey asking lots of questions. I think we're going to go into a bit more detail about this, um, but using a factor analysis to identify the key dimensions of parental mediation. We then wanted to um, use the survey questions to identify what predicts the different patterns of parental mediation we found. And then we used multiple regression techniques to try to understand the consequences of that parental mediation in terms of children's online opportunities and risks on the internet. And can you talk about the uh, data? Which countries were the survey conducted? What sort of sampling was used? Right, so we um, had a fantastic opportunity um, as part of a project to survey a representative sample of parents in each of eight countries. They were France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Poland, Sweden, Spain and the United Kingdom. They were countries that we already knew uh, varied in terms of parental style and adoption of the internet, so it was a meaningful uh, set of comparisons. And we um, uh, sampled 800 in each country, so we ended up with an N of 6,400. And they were parents of children um, from 6 to 14 years old. So a key goal of the study was to measure um, parental mediation strategies. Um, can you talk us through how, for instance, um, you measured active parental mediation? So drawing on some previous uh, both qualitative and survey research, we identified five questions that seemed to us to capture the idea of parents' active engagement with their children's internet use. So those were Things like, um, do you talk to your child about what he or she does on the internet? Do you encourage your child to explore and learn things on the internet? Do you sit with your child when they use the internet, stay nearby when your child uses the internet, and do shared activities together? So those were the five questions, and we asked them each um, to the parents on a scale from um, zero to four, which was from always to never. Um, and how did you combine answers to these questions? So first of all, we looked at the um, correlation matrix uh, to see how all of those um, different questions related and found that there was a high correlation um, broadly among all of those items. There's always a bit of um, variation and we did um, a test called um, Combax Alpha which uh, gives you a sense of whether it's okay to put them all together as one scale. And then um, having... Um, figured out that it was fine to put them together, we then simply added up the scores. So we got an average score for each parent um, across those five different indicators. And then a key goal of linear regression is to take, for instance, an index of um, active parental mediation um, and try to explain variation in that. So can you talk us through um, how you went about the linear regression modelling, why you thought it was the appropriate tool, what sorts of explanatory variables you thought were important to, to put in there? Mm. 
So having got our, um, our scale, um, we then thought about the different variables that we'd measured in the survey and we divided them um, broadly into three categories. First were demographic variables to see if um, the demographics of the parents and the child might explain uh, how much active uh, mediation they do. Then we looked at parent uh, skills and children's skills and then last we looked at the country factors. And so we did three um, linear regressions in sequence. First of all, just putting in demographics um, which didn't make that much difference. Then we put added into the linear regression also the child skill and parent skill um, variables and that really made a difference. So parents did more active, or we also called it enabling mediation, for more digitally skilled children. And they did more also if they as parents were digitally skilled. And then we also um, found some uh, findings for the country differences, which are always quite difficult to explain. Okay, can we talk about the um, strengths and limitations of using um, a technique like linear regression modelling on observational data, particularly when the it's survey data representative samples of various countries? Of course, it's um, absolutely the case that uh, survey data gives you um, data where you're looking for patterns among the correlations uh, in the variables, so you can't make strong causal claims. In fact, you have to be very careful about inferring causation from uh, correlational data of any kind. Um, but on the other hand, uh, what we had was representative samples of parents in the eight countries. Um, it was a, therefore a very large uh, number of parents and we were pretty confident that it had been sampled so that we could uh, say something about European parents um, overall. And in designing the survey what we tried very hard was to identify what the kind of confounding variables might be. So we wanted to make a, we wanted to uh, suggest, let's say, that more skilled parents uh, were more likely to um, uh, mediate their parent, their children's internet use actively. Um, so we have a theory about the direction of causation, if you like, but we have to be careful in drawing um, strong conclusions about what the survey can um, show in terms of causation. And then we really try hard to identify the possible confounding variables and use those to rule out as far as we can what the competing um, alternative explanations might be. So Sonia, looking back um, when you first decided to do a study like this, um, if you were to use a different methodology, what sort of methodology might you have been uh, interested in using? I think the research questions that we were asking could um, really only be uh, studied using survey design. Um, I've done a lot of qualitative work with parents and children and families around digital media and I always come away at the end with a worry about whether I can really speak about um, British parents or European parents. Uh, I always come away worrying about whether I've um, somehow biased in ways that I can't quite spot in terms of um, talking about fathers versus mothers or older parents or more skilled parents versus less skilled parents. So I think a survey is the right method for um, being able to say something about parents on a kind of national representative level and also being sure that you've really taken into account the relevant demographic factors. Whether they turn out to be unimportant or important, um, a survey will give you a good indication of that. So, and, and perhaps also just to say about um, some of the findings in a survey, they're not all, they, they can be quite subtle findings and um, relatively small effects but still statistically significant and interesting and so you might miss some of those in a qualitative study but in a survey you kind of really see what the kind of overall pattern of um, variables in operation are and you have a way of kind of gauging what's more or less important. So finally Sonia, um, what advice would you give graduate students in media communications in terms of methods? What do they need to know um, to be a modern day social scientist? I think it's really important that um, media and communication students have uh, an awareness and a, at least some understanding of the range of methods that's used in our field. Uh, I think that both because um, everyone's got to make a sensible decision about which method they're going to use, whether it's for a, res a small research project or um, in the future as part of larger research teams, you need to know the pros and cons of different methods. 
and also because in our field people are using a lot of different kinds of methods, both qualitative and quantitative, and any uh, researcher in the field has got to weigh the contributions of those different kinds of studies and find ways to bring them together. So. Um, so yeah, so I do qualitative and quantitative research. I like making that decision about which one is appropriate when. I think they can tell us different things and I hope that our students will um, have that possibility to explore the range of options.